If I had to go down memory lane and talk about my life and times living in the shadow, better known as Dorian Yates, uh, that would take us all the way back to 1989. And uh, that would also take me back to Ireland, where I was a guest poser and an unknown bodybuilder to me by the name of Dorian Yates would be a co-guest poser or a warm-up act, so to speak. I was guest posing out there. Dorian came in as a guest poser right around like 300 and something pounds. I think he was like the biggest thing that everybody had seen at that time. Wasn't in shape, but he was obviously a work in progress and naturally I wasn't very impressed. And I think uh, after that guest posing appearance, I never really paid any attention until I wound up in New York City at the New York Night of Champions in 1990. In second place was Dorian Yates. And starting off in second place at the New York Night of Champions was no, no joke. So fast forward into 1991. March came along, I'd go back to Columbus, Ohio, become the Arnold Classic champion uh, for the second year in a row, and we would head straight to Orlando, Florida. As we got closer to the event, it was clear that uh, people were talking about Dorian Yates and Lee Haney, and not so much about Sean Ray. I didn't take offense to it yet until we were backstage. And as I turned, I could see the shadow. I saw the back of Dorian Yates which was more impressive than Lee Haney's at the time. You couldn't deny Dorian's grainy, big, dense, thick calves. Uh, and of course, Dorian Yates served notice. And we would move into our very first Mr. Olympia Championships in 92 in Helsinki, Finland. And arguably, Dorian had the advantage because he was second place in the 91 Olympia. So naturally, I would be trying to find out a little bit more about who this Dorian Yates guy was, but he just was under-publicized. There wasn't a lot of material on the shadow but he was one of those guys that was pretty much the same height as Lee Haney. Potentially had the ability to be bigger than Lee Haney. Someone I was going to have to contend with. And then I would wind up in fourth place, um, a little dejected. But nobody argued with Dorian winning the 92 Mr. Olympia. Um, and we moved on to 1993. And uh, no one argued with Dorian's win in 1993. I'm now thinking, holy crap, this guy's won two Mr. Olympias. What's it going to take? And so I went back to the drawing board. And in 1994, and I was as best as I could be, but four weeks before the show, word got out that Dorian Yates had torn his bicep. And by the time we wound up in Atlanta, Georgia, Dorian Yates, to me, looked kind of like a hot mess. Uh, and he just didn't look as dominating as he, as he had the year before in 93. I, I wasn't in awe. And I knew that if it was gonna be close, that the posing round was gonna carry me to victory. And when it was the last two of us standing, I was very confident that this was gonna be my time to shine place plaque being given by Ray Boudreaux of Body Masters. These awards will be given to competitor number seven, Sean Ray. It seemed like all the air out of my sail had just disappeared, kind of like the air coming out of a balloon. I shrunk. Dorian was Mr. Olympia for the third consecutive year, and I'm just thinking, do I want to do this for another six, seven years? I mean, the guy is five foot ten. He's 250 pounds. He's not 100% and he still wins. So naturally, I show up in 1995 and I try to do it all over again. Now I have to take an introspective look at what I'm doing here on this Mr. Olympia stage. Where's my career going? What am I doing? I'm, I had to find a way to beat this guy. And the only way I can do it would be presentation. So 96, I jumped in erroneously into the Arnold Classic and I jumped in and boom, fifth place. Maybe it's, it's time for the bigger guys. They're all bigger than me. And I said, no, I, I wouldn't go down rolling over for these guys. Getting fifth place in the uh, Arnold Classic in 96 was the best thing that could have happened to me because I spent the rest of that year eat, sleeping, training, and breathing bodybuilding. I didn't care about my guest posings. I didn't care about my sponsors. I didn't long for a relationship and I, didn't, I welcomed being alone and isolated because now it was war. I had to get back to where I needed to be and I, I headed into Chicago in 96 with one thing on my mind and that was Dorian Yates. And I didn't see anything on Dorian. I mean, Dorian win the Olympia and he'd disappear and show up on that Olympia stage as a nightmare for some of us. I mean, because he just kept getting bigger. But this time I wasn't gonna buy into the hype. I showed up backstage at the 96 Mr. Olympia with a vengeance. And I remember getting into an argument with Steve Weinberger, who was one of the judges, because they had told us at the athletes meeting that we couldn't have any seconds backstage. No one could help us backstage. So we were all back there to fend for ourselves, which was fine. Mike Matarazzo or, or, or Mike Quinn, I think it was, was uh, helping me with my oil. And uh, we were kind of helping each other. And I looked over and I saw Steve Weinberger and Dorian Yates sequestered in a room. Jim Mannion, I think, was in there. But it looked like there was some type of activity going on in the room. 
that had Mr. Olympia in there. And I complained to Wayne Demilia. I said, Wayne Demilia, if that's not fixed, Joe Weider's gonna be my next person I go find and fix it. Because I thought there was an unfair advantage. We had IFBB judges looking at Mr. Olympia, helping Mr. Olympia. It just didn't look right. I felt like I'm, I'm beat. I have to fight with more than just Dorian Yates. And of course it pissed Steve Weinberger off. He came out, got in my face, pointed his finger at me, and basically said he was here to help everybody. And I came back with some sarcastic remark that I don't see how you can help everybody in a room by yourself. And it was at that moment that I felt, uh-oh, maybe, maybe I bit off more than I could chew because uh, if he's not judging the Olympia, all of his friends are judges. So it's got to get back one way or the other. But I felt confident on the way I looked. I felt Dorian would have to beat me rather than me having to beat Dorian. And before it was all said and done, it did come back down to me and Dorian. They will take these awards to the second place winner. Sean Ray. And of course, when I heard, and still the champion basically, Dorian Yates, it was a bitter pill for me to swallow. I was in the, sha I was in the shadow of the shadow. Dorian Yates for me was the only thing that mattered. He was the guy, he was the reason I was lifting weights. He was getting me out of bed every day, trying to dethrone the champion. Fast forward to 97, because this contest was gonna be held in my backyard, Long Beach. And this was gonna be where I'm gonna take the title once and for all from Dorian Yates. I knew at this show that I was gonna bring the best I could bring. And before the show was over, we had found out that Dorian had torn his tricep and that he was heavy. And I'm thinking, oh, well, he made a mistake coming to California. And I was very confident that this would be a show between me and Dorian. And before it was all done, Nasser El Simbadi and Dorian Yates would be the last two standing. I was regulated to third. And I had to watch those two being called out and compared, knowing it was a foregone conclusion that this was going to be Nasser El Simbadi challenging for the title and not Sean Ray. In watching that, I could see that Dorian was heavy in the midsection that his arm was literally non-existent because there was no bicep and no tricep. Dorian Yates would be winning his final Mr. Olympia right there in Long Beach, and Nasser would be in second. Another controversial win for the shadow, but I felt this would be the last win. It was gonna be something that I wasn't gonna stand by and watch happen again and again and again. And as fate would have it, Dorian would retire somewhere in mid-1998. But in looking back from 92 to 1997, I didn't like Dorian. I wasn't a fan of his physique. I didn't like the way he marketed the title of Mr. Olympia. I knew nothing about Dorian. We never had a conversation. We never talked on the phone. We never trained together. I don't even think I ran into him. It wasn't until we were done that I would even allow myself to entertain the idea to talk to Dorian. And as fate would have it, I'd fly to Ireland where we first met in 2001. And I was guest posing at the Irish National Championships. And I'd see that Dorian Yates was the master of ceremonies. And I wound up staying the night at Dorian's house that night. And we talked about everything but bodybuilding. And I found out that Dorian Yates wasn't the enemy. That Dorian Yates was a guy that put his pants on one leg at a time. And bodybuilding was something that he just happened to be good at. I realized that he didn't ask to be Mr. Olympia. He believed that he could be, much like myself. And I found that we had more things in common in terms of how we approached the business of bodybuilding than we had as, as differences. You know, I thought of him as the enemy over in England and I'm over here representing America. He's the big white guy and I'm holding the flag for the little black guy over here. And I had to find these differences in order to get myself out of bed that it was war. And when I realized that the war was over, that Dorian Yates was more of an ambassador to bodybuilding than I knew. Dorian had the weight of a country on his shoulder over in England. Dorian had legions of fans that he represented and he knew I was coming after something that he coveted. He, it was his, that was what he, that's what got him out of bed. And from that time on, we became good friends. We traveled the world. We, were, we both became ambassadors of the sport, promoters of the sport. And it seemed like the further and further away I got from the Mr. Olympia, um, Dorian and I could realize that what we did at, in the time that we did it, it was war. And that we are domesticated and civil, civilized now to the degree that I can respect what he did. Because I, I saw where he came from. He came from less. The genetics weren't as, as, as beneficial to him as they were for me. His desire to be Mr. Olympia was stronger than his desire to have a Mercedes and to have a big house and to be in Hollywood. He changed the game. Without Dorian Yates, there's no Sean Ray. Dorian was a shadow to all of us. He stopped all of us every time we saw him in September. We could change the name from the shadow to the nightmare because that's what he was for all of us. He was a nightmare. We had to train 
for this guy that we would see only at the Olympia. And he would not surprise us, but piss us off. He would, he would make us reevaluate what it is we're actually doing with our bodies. He made me become more of an artist instead of someone trying to be strong and big. And he changed the game for me. I didn't play the size game, but thank God for Dorian because there'll never be another Dorian Yates. But without Dorian Yates, I don't believe we have Ronnie Coleman. So what do I have to say about Dorian? I'd say this, as a six time Mr. Olympia, he was a great champion. Flawed, maybe there's a couple titles he didn't deserve. He was a winner by default. He had the advantage of being judged by the same judges every year, but he's much more than a bodybuilder. He's paying it forward. He's not just sitting on his butt and letting all that knowledge go to waste. Uh, Dorian is much more meaningful to our sport in retirement than he was winning the Sandow Trophy. And I think as a person, I've given myself time to kind of understand him, to engage with him, and to respect him. So for that reason, I don't think Dorian Yates is a shadow anymore. Dorian Yates is a beacon, he's a light. His light has illuminated a lot of possibilities for bodybuilders that come from nothing. Because Dorian will tell you, if it weren't for bodybuilding, he'd probably be dead. And I gotta tell you, if it wasn't for Dorian, I don't think I would have had the career that I had. So for that reason, I salute the shadow. But we all have to have a reason to get out of bed and do what we do. And as a bodybuilder, Dorian Yates gave me reason and he gave me purpose. So to the shadow, I salute you. Generation Iron, I'm Sean Ray.